Recently, a friend of mine asked me a question about sex toys. And my initial response was, girl, get out of my bed, you freak. Recently, a friend of mine um, who also shares a passion for mentoring young women um, asked me the question, kind of caught me off guard. She's like, hey, Mac, what do you think about sex toys? And I was like, girl, what? She's like, I'm just asking for a friend. I'm like, yeah, right. But anyway, she was saying one of the young women um, had asked her that question. And so we got you know, into a whole conversation about it. And I thought, hmm, that might be something interesting to make a video about. So here goes. So. Before we even get into that, I thought, let's expand this whole video. Let's, you know, look at the whole gamut. So, um, in today's video, we're going to talk about masturbation, sex toys, and pornography. Because they kind of all, in some kind of ways, deal with um, similar issues and um, questions that people have. So, let's, here we go. So, let's start with masturbation. Um, I know it's a taboo topic, and listen, I'm not talking about this from a... 13 year old 12 year old boy perspective discovering himself that kind of thing I don't have time for that that's not what this video is about so if that's what the answer you're looking for I, I don't have a value judgment on that at all I'm talking about grown folk I'm talking about people who um, you know know what their body parts are um, know how they function and um, have the question uh, real questions about masturbation so first of all first question um, most people want to know is what does the Bible say about masturbation well I'm gonna tell you um, I am no biblical expert however um, from what I can gather and what I have um, tried to find out on my own there is no particular scripture that specifically talks about masturbation being sinful the two scriptures that are pointed at um, I would invite you to go read those scriptures in context and because I don't know the scriptures by heart let me go ahead and just check my page my little research um, the two scriptures though that are referenced um, are Genesis 38 9 through 10 and Matthew 5 27 through 30 and so again what I would say for you is Go and research those scriptures and read them in their context and ask God to speak to you about what he is saying in context from what I've gathered in reading those in context. The first one, the, the um, Genesis scripture is not really the whole idea of spilling the seed and that being an aberration to God. The whole idea was um, the reference that he was making was that... Um, the person in whom he was speaking was not um, fulfilling his obligation. Um, he was having the sexual act, but not um, um, impregnating um, his um, his relative as the custom would have it in terms of her being a widow and him being the closest um, family relation. Um, with her husband having died without having given her a son long story but anyway the context makes it important we can really take scripture out of out of um, context so anyway and the second one I'm not even going to get into the one on Matthew because I think some people can be overzealous in the way that they want to ascribe um, um, speak on behalf of God and punishments on behalf of God and I think that that is one of those scriptures that um, people can take out of context and really do some damage to other people. So that's my opinion. Again, always in terms of scripture, read scripture for yourself, get interpretation for yourself, seek um, knowledge and wisdom from God in terms of meditating on scripture. So again, these so are my, my um, opinions. However, however, um, what I do feel in terms of when we talk about masturbation is that um, the question is, um, does it, is it born out of lust? Is it born out of a desire to fulfill or feed your flesh? And if that is, if that is the reason that, um, you have these urges that you just cannot, um, contain, um, and that you're doing it for gratification or pleasure, 
then I would have to say to you that, yeah, no, I, I don't think that it is something that is pleasing to God in terms of um, your reasoning behind it. And will it lead you down a, a, a darker, deeper path of, of actually fulfilling um, sexual behaviors that are not pleasing to God? And so um, is you self-pleasuring going to become something that is not enough and then you want to go out and you want to fornicate or you want to be an adulterer or all of those things? And so... From that perspective, I really um, don't um, think that masturbation is a good idea. That is my perspective. I am not making a value judgment on you. That is just how I strongly believe. And so then there's the argument, well, um, it's better for me to explore myself than to go off into fornication or to go and and do things that, you know, um, are, are, are specifically stated in the Bible as sins. And I will say this, first of all, I can't judge you because I was a fornicator. Okay. And so I'm not trying to make a value judgment on you. The truth of the matter is sex feels great, right? God gave us sex as one of those gifts in marriage, um, that strengthens the bond between married people because, um, we join together and become one. In Hebrews 13 and I believe it is 4, the Bible says the marriage bed is undefiled. That means untainted. Um, that means pure. That means that um, what you and your spouse decide to do in your mutually agreed upon um, marriage relationship, just you and your spouse, no other people, no other animals, no other okay you get what I'm saying um, then um, it is okay with God as long as it isn't something that it's going to lead um, the two of you down the path to um, sinful behaviors um, because the verse goes on to say God will judge adulterers and the sexually immoral so um, you have to be very careful about um, even your sexual relations inside of marriage God really does have a plan for sex and marriage that being the case the whole idea that the um, that the marriage bed is undefiled, that means it is basically the Greek for that means uncontaminated. That means what you and your spouse do in your marriage relationship is okay with God as long as um, the choices that you guys make together in your bed, in your bedroom, do not open themselves up to um, your marriage and your sexual relations being contaminated. So how can that happen? Um, and how does that relate to sex toys and pornography and all the rest? Well, first of all, in terms of ma masturbation, um, if you're in a marriage relationship, uh, you have the, you know, actual real person available to you um, and that you can mutually stimulate each other. Um, you are not, you are not just stimulating yourself, self-stimulation. And so... Um, there's nothing wrong with those different ways that you explore each other's bodies um, in terms of the use of sex toys in the bedroom. Um, again, if you are a single person and you are using sex toys, my question is, um, again, back to the whole masturbation thing, are you feeding your flesh? Um, are you satisfying some type of lustful um, uh, desires? Um and can you become addicted um, to your toy? Um, so these are things that you should really think about and would that be pleasing to God? Because I can't imagine your thoughts are pure as you are self-pleasuring, whether it's you know through masturbation or through sex toys. Now, when it comes to a marriage relationship, um, again, I personally have no experience because I'm not interested in, in those. I um, never have been. And I know it sounds, I'm not trying to be prudish. It's just that... Psh, to be honest, I was always someone who liked the real thing. Um, even before I was in um, um, a, you know, authorized marriage relationship that, you know, where I, you know, can explore sex the way that God had determined. Um, and I can tell you, and so it's like, well, how can you, how can you tell somebody don't do it and you did it? I can tell you because there's always consequences whether there's physical consequences or there's mental, psychological, spiritual consequences. When you do choose to do things other than the way that God has designed them, there are consequences. And so I would rather tell you what I know to be right um, 
than what I did before I, uh, and I'm not going to even say before I knew it was right because I knew it was wrong when I was doing it, but yet I chose to do it. So, um, but there are consequences. And so why um, risk the consequences? So anyway, let's go back to a marriage relationship. A few years back, um, I was, um, many years back, not a few years, many years back, I remember I was a uh, workman's compensation insurance adjuster for a little period of time. And I can remember um, a man who, and I don't remember the injury that he had or how he got injured at work, but it, it impacted his sexual function. Um, and he was a younger man and he had a wife and he was concerned about, you know, um, losing his wife because he wasn't able to perform in the same way sexually. And so he had requested, um, that the, um, as a part of his settlement that we provided him with a method of being able to, um, be able to perform sexually so that he could satisfy his wife. Um, and that got to making me think, you know, as I was thinking about this particular video is that, um, I do realize for medical reasons, there are going to be times when some people, um, cannot perform in the same way. And maybe they want to introduce, um, a way that they can, um, pleasure their spouse, um, and continue to have a relationship, um, an intimate relationship in their home with their spouse so that neither one of them will be um, tempted to go outside of the marriage relationship. And so I would, I would think that in that situation, um, that would be acceptable because again, the whole idea is it is for, um, the benefit of the marriage, um, in terms of them mutually agreeing upon something that will keep them intimate together. Um, but when it becomes perverted, when you're just doing the toys for toys sake, just cause y'all just, <laughs> want to go to the extreme level of freakiness that um, is is beyond just the intimacy, then you might need to think about it because if it's going to cause you to be more lustful, more lust-filled and want to explore outside of your marriage, then it can become a problem. Um, and that's kind of where pornography comes in. Again, I've never been one to be interested in pornography. It just didn't interest me. Not a value judgment, just didn't interest me, but something you have to think about. How is pornography born? Pornography is really a business, one. Number two, it's usually a se sexual acts between people who are not married. It's usually sexual acts between, you know, multiple people. All kinds of perverted different ways of sex. Um, not all of them, but some of it. And so, um, even just in the way that it is created and its intended purpose, um, it doesn't really lend itself well to um, a marriage relationship. Um, does it? Is it going to lead to somebody being addicted to it? Is it going to lead to them wanting to always see this? Um, is it going to take their mind off of their partner and now put their mind on the people that they are seeing and the performances that they are seeing um, on the videos? Is it going to make them judge their partner? Is it going to make them lust and want to look outside their relationship? Um, I just think personally that it's a slippery slope. Um, some people think, oh, it spices up our relationships, it gives us ideas on what to do with. Listen, you are a creative person. All bets are off. You can figure out how to do all kinds of freaky deaky fun things. Um, okay, y'all, I have to laugh because how the delivery guy gonna come in the middle of my video? So there's all kinds of ways that you and your spouse can learn each other, pleasure each other. Um, the whole scripture about the marriage bed is undefiled. Um, the word bed is a metaphor. That doesn't mean that your relations have to be um, relegated to just the bed or the bedroom. Again, as long as it's you and him. Um, you guys can find all kinds of ways to explore each other. Now, when it when I talk about like toys, I mean like um, like the fake penises and other implements and stuff like that. That ain't my thing. But like, you know, I, I just real thing. That's all I'm gonna say. Two words, real thing. But um, when it comes to like other ways that you guys can explore each other. There's nothing wrong with dressing up. I mean, um, 
if you're trying to figure out um, ways to um, spice up your sex life or um, some of the things that you're thinking, because I hear the excuse, oh, we, we just watch the pornography because he wants to get ideas or he wants me to get ideas on things we could do. Y'all don't need no tutorial. You are two healthy human beings that can, I'm sure, figure this thing out. But um, why risk the lustful aspect in terms of getting sucked into that whole pornography um, whirlwind and possible addiction and to pornography and lust outside the relationship and he looking at her too long are you judging him according to the bits and pieces that are on the person on the screen so um but if you want to figure out how can we think of new things y'all can go get some of them little dice that have different roll the dice and whatever comes up that's what y'all do or the little coupons, um, little things. Create your own um, coupons. Have honest conversations with each other about what you like and what you don't like. What I'm saying is, is that um, keep the world out your bed. And that might include keeping the world's ideas of what your bed and your marriage and your sexual relationship is supposed to be for your, um, with your spouse. Um, again, I will say to um, our singles, um, and our married couples, make sure that whatever you're doing is pleasing to God. Um, is it is it something that for spouses is it going to lead you guys to be closer together, to keep your relationship together, to genuinely become one, as the scripture says? Um, and if you're single, then really engaging in sexual relationships is not allowing you to become one um, with that person in a covenant marriage relationship but what you are doing is you're mingling spirits and um that is a, a scary thing because um then how do you detach once you've attached to someone in a way that god hasn't desired so you're opening yourself up to some other things so um at the end of the day masturbation sex toys pornography um I personally don't recommend any of those ideas, um, especially if they're going to lead you down the path of um, addiction, dependency, lustfulness, perversion, um, and just basically just feeding your flesh. Um, and so, um, again, as usual, the one thing you'll always hear from me is that you have choices. You have choices. We all do. God gives us all the choice. The, the question is, what choice are you going to make? And is your choice going to be pleasing to God? So I'm not preaching it to you, but I just want you to think about, is the decision I'm making with my body, which is the temple of the Lord, is it going to be pleasing to God? I'm not saying that the flesh don't feel what the flesh feel and want what the flesh wants. But we have been given the gift um, of being able to um, control our flesh and to flee from um, situations um, that are not pleasing to God or that will tempt us and get us into um, more or slide down that slippery slope um, into um, behaviors that um don't line up with the word of god and you are very intelligent and very wise and um i th i'm gonna end this video with this this is what i used to say to teens if and this for the most people i ain't talking to like y'all people who are a little off balance but <laughs> for the most part this is what i tell teens and this is how i explain how you can control your sexual behaviors and your lust and all that is that that same instinct inside of you, that same thing that will not allow you to reach your hand way back to Wisconsin and slap the fire at your mama, right? That same level of restraint that you have that lets you know that that just ain't right and ain't no way I'm gonna slap my mama, then, then you can control yourself. Because if you can keep yourself from slapping mama, because you know it ain't right, then you can control your sexual urges. And I know that's silly, 
but that's the way I can get teens to understand it. And y'all grown folks, I know y'all can get it. So anyway, um, I hope this little video helps someone. I'm so excited that you're continuing to take this ride with me on the journey to freedom. And um, this is Milk and Condoms with Ty Mac.